She definitely seems like a gen defense character. Not a super great one at that. She is just a defense character. I hate this. It's like night. Like legitimately, her drones are like night guards that don't go away unless you disable them. And there are par there are parts where you just can't disable them. If you get detected, you can't disable it. And if you fail the skill checks, you you can't disable it. They've effectively made another night. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Time, and thank you for lending me some of yours for this video. As you may know, the PTB has gone live, and the new killer, the Skull Merchant, has been revealed. With her new power being added to the roster of our killers, I will ask and answer the following questions. How does her power function? How do you play her effectively? And is she good? Let's take a look at the first question. How does her power function? The Skull Merchant uses her four charges of drones as a sort of trap to keep tabs on the survivors. These drones have a very short cooldown and cannot be placed near each other, so utilize them wisely. The drones not only tell you the location of survivors, but if the survivor stays within the radius of said drone for too long, you will be able to instant down them for about 40 seconds. If there are no survivors detected by the drone after a short period of time, the drone will go into what is called a scouting mode. Scouting mode is when the drone is pretty much deactivated and will scan for survivors within the radius using two beams of light. When these lights connect with the survivor, it will reactivate and the survivor will gain progress to become instant downable. Survivors can attempt to disable these drones, which will send the charge back to the Skull Merchant if they succeed, but they will also gain a trap that the killer can use to track the survivor. These traps have three batteries that fully deplete over about 12 seconds. Once fully depleted, you can remove the trap, but traps that you fail to remove will gain one battery. If you have a trap on you and walk into an active drone, you will gain all of your batteries back, so be careful about that. Drones around the map can be active through your radar scanner by holding down the alternate killer ability button and then clicking on a drone. In doing so, you will gain a cooldown. This is a lot of stuff for a killer to have as a base kit, and there is still more. <laughs> If you're within the radius of an active drone for a few seconds, as the killer, you will become undetectable until you leave, and your status will linger for about 3 seconds. Now with all that information dumped on you, we go to the next topic. How do you play her efficiently? To play the Skull Merchant efficiently, you can do what any other player does and run full meta builds that revolve around kicking generators. Her drones having the passive ability to make a survivor exposed is enough of a deterrent to keep most survivors away from generators. Additionally, you being undetectable is very scary while a survivor is exposed. Try and set up your drones around generators or places that have a lot of open space so you can continue to activate and deny those areas. Survivors attempting to disable them are not able to disable an active drone. If you want to use it in a chase, make sure a survivor can't get away easily as the drone setup might just be a waste of your time. If you trap a survivor in a small room, like for example the RPD room right next to the basement on the west side, Set it up there and try to go for an exposed hit. Just try to block the doors so they can't leave. While looking at perks, the best ones would most likely be within the generator kicking meta because she can utilize a 3 gen setup very well. If you're looking for something different, you can also run some other niche builds that would affect her in a different manner. I know of none yet, but the build that I have been playing with has been gaining some decent results. Her new perk, Game of Foot, allows you to change your obsession if they are the survivor with the most amount of time chased, and it also gives you a minor 5% haste buff after breaking a pallet, gen, wall, while chasing said obsession. This perk is a mouthful, but the best part about it is that the obsession changes when you hit that survivor that you couldn't quite catch. That will allow you some funny pranks with Ranker. If a survivor in the endgame is alone, they will automatically be the survivor with the most amount of time chased. Meaning once you hit them, they will go down, become the obsession, and you will be able to instantly mori them. If you use this perk, I recommend running Nemesis, Furtive Chase, Game of Foot, and Ranker, since you will be able to effectively find your obsession, or create one, and down them during an endgame scenario. It also allows for a more hit and run style of play, creating new obsessions through the likes of Furtive Chase and Nemesis while also strengthening the stealth aspect of her base kit. Now comes the final question, is she good? After playing her for a little bit, I will say that her power is quite intriguing, but other killers can do what she does better. If you're trying to set up at a 3 gen, Knight would be more effective since he can actively chase two survivors at once and hold down a setup much better. If you're going to do something like this Ranker build, 
it would be more effective on many of the higher tier killers. Everything about her to me seems kind of lackluster, including her Mori, but that's not really important. Honestly, she just feels like a worse version of the Knight mixed together with a worse version of the Trapper. Her power is setup based and has little functionality in a chase, making her incredibly loopable. The exposure in her base kit is nice, but more often than not, you'll find yourself looking for the instant down and not even getting them exposed because they just leave the radius. The stealth aspect of her drones is very weak when not set up properly, and if it is, the survivors will just leave so they will not have to be exposed. If I were to put her on a tier list, I would put her at the bottom of C or maybe even the top of D. I don't think she's terrible, but I would like to see some buffs for her in the future, and hopefully those buffs will make her more of an identifiable killer. And with all my ranting over, that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you all for watching. Please leave a comment letting me know your thoughts on the new killer and if there are any builds that you've had success with. If you liked the video, please consider dropping a like and subscribing so I can make videos more frequently. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and I will see you guys next time. Ugh. <sighs>